Good evening. It is indeed an honor and a privilege to be able to speak a few words about a person who towers like a colossus in the world of music before an August gathering such as this through the National Festival of Music and Dance, the Parampara series. It is a rare and wonderful thing indeed when a musical instrument is identified with the person who makes music on it. And it is even more so when that instrument is one of the oldest that has existed in our civilization and has been played by humble herdsmen in rural settings since time immemorial. In different languages of this land, this simple side-blown bamboo flute is called by different names, Basuri, Bahin, Bashi, Benu, and so many others. But choosing as he did this particular instrument, Pandit Hari Prasad Chaurasya ji became for a generation of music lovers synonymous with it. Pandit ji's constant quest, his many and varied struggles throughout his life are inspirational in themselves. These struggles would perhaps have discouraged a lesser person who would have left the journey halfway disheartened. But through his perseverance and diligence, that is the hallmark of so many hard-won hard -won successes. Today, he strides like a colossus in the world of music across the globe, spreading the beauty of his art throughout. Pandit Hari Prasad Chaurasya ji was born on the first day of July 1938 in Allahabad. It was not a musical family that he was born into, not a family of traditional musicians, but a family of wrestlers. He did go to the Akhara in obedience to his father's wishes, but his heart was not in it. But perhaps the stamina, the strength of lungs and heart required for playing this wind instrument that he has in ample measure came from those early training sessions. He went on to learn vocal music with his neighbor Raja Ram at the age of 15. Within a year after hearing the flute at a recital by Pandit Bholanath Prasanna, he switched to the Bansuri under the heritage of, under the tutelage of Pandit Bholanath of Varanasi for eight years. In 1957, he joined All India Radio Katak as a staff artist where he worked as a composer and performer. In 1960, he was transferred to Bombay. Here he began to train under the legendary Surbahar artist Vidushi Annapurna Devi ji, daughter of Ustad Alauddin Khan Sahib, sister of Ustad Ali Akbar Khan Sahib. His training here was rigorous and exacting, but his musicianship reached hitherto unimaginable heights of grandeur and beauty. A practitioner of the senior gharana, Pandit ji has been responsible for experimenting with the possibilities of his instrument and expanding its frontiers in order to encompass playing rag in the demanding classical discipline. He has also brought in his individual sensibility, his signature stylistic and melodic originality within this framework, which together with the limpid tunefulness of his music and his complete mastery of the intricacies of the rag itself, make any of his expositions instantly recognizable to his many fans and admirers around the world. Pandit Hari Prasad Chaurasya ji has, through his constant sadhana, always expanded the frontiers of the possible, both of his chosen instrument and the expositions of the rags that he plays. Within the physical limitations of this simple instrument of bamboo, he creates wondrous melodic magic. One of the most valuable aspects of Pandit Hari Prasad Chaurasya Ji's musicianship 
and his musical imagination is his open-mindedness, his receptivity to other musical cultures. His humility shines through always as he seeks to learn from all that he sees and hears. Sometimes this finds an echo in his own music, but always within the framework of his own discipline. One can hear, for instance, snatches of the Bianam of Assam sometimes, a folk genre he heard when on his many tours here, or sometimes uh, echoes and ideas of Western harmony and melodic improvisations and impressions find their way into his expositions of the lighter, more romantic pieces that he performs. Through these, he proves that music is universal and also that our own Shastya Sangeet can accommodate so many musical ideas without losing its own identity at all in any way. It is always difficult to pinpoint the appeal of a particular piece of music and set it down in words. The language of Pandit Hariprasad Chaurasiaji's music is essentially simple without any fussiness or over ornamentation. It is his ability to de delve into the very heart of the rag he is playing, its core melodic idea and the particular mood that it seeks to evoke and then bring these ideas out through his masuri in calm, unhurried ways that take along his listeners across the globe through live concerts or recordings or other media platforms. His expositions are deceptively effortless, its many layered splendor impossible to replicate with an appeal whose arc stretches from learned connoisseurs of Hindustani Shastriya Sangeet to the layperson of other musical cultures as well. It is replete with emotional appeal while never deviating from the rigorous frame within which it is couched, its tombered richness immediate in its appeal while also capable of stamping itself for a long time on the consciousness of listeners. A notable aspect of Panditji's musicianship is his willingness and enthusiasm in trying out different ways of making music through his instrument. With his close friend and collaborator, Pandit Shiv Kumar Sharmaji on the Santur, he was part of the musical duo Shiv Hari. Together, they have composed unforgettable music for many films, including Chandni, Silsila, Dar, Lamhe, and so many others. He has also collaborated with Bhubaneshwar Mishra, the duo Bhuban Hari, and composed many melodies for Odia cinema. His music has been used for a Telugu film also. He has also collaborated with several Western musicians, including John McLaughlin, Jean Garberek, Ken Lober. He has also played with the Beatles early in his career. During the days of the gramophone record and the audio cassette, his album Call of the Valley, in collaboration with Pandit Shiv Kumar Sharmaji on the Santur and Pandit Brijbhushan Kabraji was an extreme, extremely popular presentation, which has gone on to become a classic. This, of course, is only one among the numerous other albums he has to his credit, as well as now live recordings on various platforms. His concerts and collaborations with Pandit Shiv Kumar Sharmaji and Ustad Zakir Hussain, especially, are legendary, their luminous beauty lingering in the mind long after the last notes have faded away. This art form, our Shastriya Sangeet heritage and parampara, is a tradition that is passed on from guru to shishya, teacher to taught already. It is therefore part of a musician's duty to teach, to pass on the torch of his knowledge and practice to the next generation. Panditji has indeed taken this particular aspect very seriously. In spite of his hectic performance schedule, he has taken upon himself 
the responsibility of honing the talents of a multitude of students who come to him for guidance. As a teacher, he is meticulous and devoted to the welfare of his students. He has set up two gurukuls in Mumbai and Urissa where the students are taught with full devotion and attention. Students from underprivileged backgrounds stay here free of cost. Besides, Panditji is the director of such prestigious institutions as he is the artistic director of the World Music Department in the Rotterdam Music Conservatory. Several of his students are already established in their own rights as sought after musicians as well. Panditji has been indefatigable in taking his music to other geographical locations, not just through recordings, but in person as well. From small towns in remote corners of this country, through the large and prestigious music conferences, to numerous halls and various venues across the world. He has traveled the globe with his case of bansuris, breathing magic through the bamboo flute and mesmerizing audiences everywhere. He has played for king and commoner alike in tiny towns of remote locations as well as large glittering auditoriums around the world. Through his association, with such organizations as Spignake, for instance, he has taken the intricacies of Shastriya Sangeet to young audiences, making it accessible to them, while in no way compromising on either his music musicianship or the fundamentals of the discipline itself. Before connoisseurs of, this, of the genre, his melding of romantic evocativeness with rigid structural precision is unexceptionable. In venues around the world, he has tailored his music to the knowledge levels of the music aficionados there, never compromising on the core classicism of his discipline, and always taking them along with the magic of sur melody, lay and tal, pace and rhythm. Thank you so much. <laughs>